and the next one goes up is eight minute mark. I'm worried because every time I practice, it's always 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try my best. Um, hi, I'll get, I'm Tiffany Ann, and today I'm going to explain the use of Lee Solomon code that we learned in QR code. So I'm going to explain about what error correcting code is and the elements of QR code in that to help the error co correcting and how to encode the QR code with error correcting message and how to decode that with all those errors. So what are error correcting codes? This is basically just signaling processing technique to correct errors when there is like some kind of interruptions or erasers in the signaling. So why is it important? Oh, before that, where we, we use that in any kind of communication, mobile phone, internet, barcodes, um, QR codes that I'm going to talk about, and CD, DVD, Blu-ray, if anyone used that. Um, <laughs> the importance of error correcting code is that a lot of time in our life, we see a lot of like interruptions in sending message. Like for example, when there's rain outside, it obviously we're gonna corrupt um, the signals between the phones and we can't call anyone and we don't want that phone, right? So that's why we need error correcting code. So basics of error correction is, I'm gonna skip a bit because we already learned it. And what we, recapping of what we learned is that code with minimum distance of D can correct D minus one erasers up to D minus one eraser, detect D minus one errors and correct D minus one over two errors. For example, here, the minimum distance between all these three words is two between this and that. Mm -hmm. And here we can, if we have TH, TH, we cannot correct uh, which one is it because we don't know which uh, word we're having. And still we can detect that there is some erasers, two erasers. However, on here, we have um, minimum distance of five between this kiwi and this egg. And for this, um, we can correct four error, up to four error, uh, four erasers, and we can correct up to two errors. An observation here is when codes are longer and have more redundant characters, we can um, recover more errors and more erasers. So QR code is basically using that by having a bunch of error codes um, with the original message. So first element in QR code is locator, which is this three things that everyone knows when they think about QR code, and this help uh, the our processors to locate where the QR code is. And timing mark is in between those locators, basically doing the same thing as locator to uh, know where the actual QR code is. Next is actual um, information part. So in this four stripe, there will be a format information about the QR code. So QR code has four different level of error correction. Uh, low, middle, quartile, and high. And high, we can correct up to 30% of the errors. And low, it only can cor uh, correct 7% of the errors. And how we read is that um, the first two bits of this uh, format information is the level of error correction, and zero, zero means the middle. So in the middle error correction type, we can um, uh, correct 15% of the errors in this QR code. And next is masking type, which I couldn't really understand while I'm researching about it, but basically what it does is to not have much of a blob of black squares, which can help when the QR code is um, covered with something, you can um, delete those blobs by having uh, by subtracting mask pattern from scanned symbols so that you, when you actually decode unmasked symbol, it's easier to recognize the bits, separate bits. And all of these other bits are just error correction for the format code. Next is decode mode indicator, and there's four decode mode and QR code, uh, numeric, alphanumeric, bytes, kanji, and it's all just decided by this four squares. Next is length of code, which I'm going to explain with how to read QR code. So QR code we can read by going down, uh, right down to up and in a zigzag pattern. And this 
since we're in bytes mode, as I explained here, uh, we're gonna uh, read all the codes by in the byte, which is eight bit. Um, and here we can read that it's zero 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 one one zero one, which is thirteen. And there will be thirteen code right here. <laughs> so it's just a message. The actual original message we want to convey is in this format of like snake, and we can. Um, C is encoded. And next is just end indicator as it names. It just represents the end. And interesting part, another interesting part is extra length that we have here. So I already, uh, so this QR code right now I'm using as example is version one QR code, which contains 16 data code word and 10 uh, error code. And here we already we are already using fifteen code word, but we have one more left. And the one more left um, QR code generator just put random number in it, and it's not re really representing anything. And then all of the rest is error correction code. So the error correction is also uses the random. No, it's not random. I'm gonna explain. No, as in it doesn't use the random bit. Oh yeah, it doesn't use the random bit, and it'll only use the fifteen that we actually okay. use. Uh, I'll just So how do we encode this actual thing? So first step is to convert data to integer. So here we have a tense board. Oh yeah. Right in like here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have an integer of. Do you want to grab her phone? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> That's what I was worried. So we have a data of 64, 210, something, 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 236 uh, is from the QR code. And we want to, we already converted the data to integer. The point of converting it to integer is to make it into polynomial. I would say PS. And this polynomial will be constructed as uh, 15, 210. 14, something, something, 236. The reason why we're putting it into polynomial is so that we can actually do some operations on it and have error correcting code. Uh, we can uh, calculate it. Next part is the core of error correction in QR code, which is generate a polynomial, which we already kind of saw in another presentation of generator matrix. It's I think it's similar in that way. I think it's similar in that we multiply it to find to get the, the code word that we're using. So general polynomial we use in Reese Ullman code is x minus zero x minus a to the one to x minus a to the um, ten because there's ten uh, error correction for our, our example, and this a is determines on what um, type of data we're using for the QR code. And here we're using byte to is two to the A. So we're using A as two. I think there's definitely more math into it and I need to research more <laughs> about it. Um, then our actual code word is just multiplying this two, which is Px multiplied by Gx. The reason why we multiply is what we're gonna see when we decode it. No, no, it's fine. I'll just <laughs> <laughs> so the decoding part has four different steps. So first is syndrome polynomial, locator polynomial, evaluator polynomial, magnitude polynomial. The reason why we're doing it. First, we need to know, is there an error or not in this QR code? I mean, if there's no error, there's no reason to do all those decoding part, right? So first is to decide, is there an error or not, which is syndrome's polynomial doing. And second, what we want to do is we want to know where those errors are. And that is done by the locator polynomial, as the name kind of said. And evaluated polynomial is to know how many errors there are. And lastly, <clears throat> magnitude polynomial is used for actually correcting those errors and get back to the original message. 
So I'm going to explain one type of decoding method and there's like a bunch that I found on the internet but this one was like I like kind of instinctively understood. So Berglund Welch decoder is basically using that uh, using linear algebra and uh, the as we learned in uh, coding theory, when there is two n plus two k, say n as the original message number of original message, and k as a uh, <laughs> k as a um, number of error we want to correct as a goal, uh, we need at least two plus oh no, not two n plus k number of bits survived so that we can actually correct those k number of error. And from this, we can know that there is a k errors, k number of errors in um, our code maximum. And I'm going to define ex as a x minus e1, x minus e2, something, something, to the x minus ek. And e here represents where those errors are. And from here, I can just define PI, EI equals RI, EI. I'm really rushing this presentation right now, but um, PI is the same thing that, uh, which is an encoded word. EI is that, and RI is the received code word. Um, received code word uh, from here. So it might be corrupted, we don't know yet. So why this word is, we can think in two ways. If the code in i position, if it is corrupted, then it will gonna make to e to the i zero, so this should work. However, when it's not corrupted, the received error, uh, no, received message and the original message should be same because it's not corrupted. And that's how this is working. And from then, we can have Bit, we can um, show this as a general uh, linear equation, and we can also show E as a general linear equation. And from then, we can use linear algebra to find what E, I is, and P, I is. For, um, and we already know R, I because we received the data. And then if we know P, I, then we get the correct answer of the original message. So this is how really vaguely QR code works. And one thing that I want to research more, but I couldn't really have a time or knowledge to do so, was to find, how do we find how many errors we already have, which I feel like we can do it by evaluated polynomial. And another thing is, is this really efficient? Because if we want to find PI by doing this, we need to solve tons of linear equations with using linear algebra. But I was look thinking like, is that really efficient way to do all of this? Isn't there like better way? And third question I had was, what was the third question? <laughs> <laughs> the third question I had was, I so you have, you just look at the degree of E, right? Because yeah. you solve for the coefficients of E. Oh, and that's true. Yeah. yeah. So you just look at the degree oh, of E yeah. and you should be able to get it there. That's true. Are. Since, oh, yeah. yeah. Because, because you like assume that. Take, looking yeah. at the polynomial and looking for the coefficients of the polynomial. Mm -hmm. And like, you'll have a bunch of zeros. Yeah. And like, and then you just look for the largest coefficient, which is. Which should be the number non of. Non negative. Yeah. yeah. He has to have degree at most k. K. Yeah. And that's like kind of why the system of linear equations will be solvable. But mm -hmm. then once you solve it, you can figure out exactly yeah. what yeah. that means. 